Hey everyone, Felipe here. Welcome to another Tower of Saviors card review video. In this video, I'll be covering the newly announced collaboration non-jackpot cards. So this time, we are going to have a collaboration with Rockman X Dive, which first things first, it is another Makina seal, which I'm glad it stays true to the series just because the Rockman Dive series, they're all virtual fighters and this is like data so it makes sense that there are Makina members. However, we've had many Makina collaboration seals including Hatsune Miku, Full Metal Alchemist, Tengen Topa Guren Lagan. So in my opinion, we already have an abundance of Makina collaboration seals. But that being said, it is what it is. Um, if anything, I am glad that they're staying true to the series. So let's take a look at the five non-jackpot cards that we have in the GNN news. First one we, that we have is Alia. It, this is going to be a Fire Makina. And her skill is a CD6 skill called Melt Creeper and has the following effect. First effect, explode the columns below Makinas in order to generate runestones of Makinas attributes and heart runestones. So this is going to be really useful if you have a full Makina team. This means you explode the entire board and exploding the entire board is pretty useful to get rid of weather runes, weakened runes, lock runes, um, and electrify runes. Then the second effect, ignite all enemies and change their attribute into fire for three rounds. If you've noticed the current meta, there are enemies that are immune to damage or have damage reduction unless they are ignited or they have a controlling skill on them, which means that this card will be able to break those shields in a Rockman team. So overall, I think this card will be pretty useful. Um, it will depend on what the leader skills are for the three jackpot cards, but I feel like it will be the card that you would go to if you have to break ignite shields or controlling effects shields. So definitely get one copy of these if you can. Exploding runes is useful, igniting enemies is useful as well. So next we have Cinnamon. This is going to be a light Makina card. See the six as well, and the effect is fully recover HP, explode heart runes, and if you explode more than one, uh, your team attack gets multiplied by 1.6, and the damage received gets reduced by 40%. And this will be for two rounds only if you explode one or more heart runes. However, if you explode more than eight runes um, with the effect, the effect stays in play for four rounds, so double the time. This skill will be pretty nice as a defensive skill. It will have to depend on the leader skills of the three jackpot cards though. Fully recovering HP, it will be useful if you have really high HP. If you have low HP and an attack just one shots you, then this skill basically doesn't work. And, but if you have high HP, then fully recovering HP will be pretty useful. If you have like a recovery reduction or recovery set to zero enemy skill in play. However, keep in mind this doesn't work with traffic light runes and a lot of enemies that have traffic light runes also have HP set to one. So in that case, this card will not save you from that, but it will save you from recovery equals zero enemies. In terms of exploding heart runes, you only explode heart runes, so the use might be a little bit limited because it will depend on your board, but you can counter skills that electrified heart runes or weather heart runes. Basically any debuff that goes into heart runes, you can get rid of them with this skill. So as a defensive option, it's pretty useful and exploding heart runes can be useful depending on the situation and if you get the four rounds of damage reduction then that can also increase your survivability and if you have a high hp this will be a great plus as well uh, so this card also definitely get one copy but its use will be a little bit more determined based on the leader skills from the three jackpot cards okay moving on we have palette this is going to be an Earth Makina CD7, one round longer than the other ones. Basically, 
Electrify all enemies. All enemies will be inactivated for one round and the attack of the affected enemies will be reduced by 50% for two rounds. So you might be thinking, okay, so if the enemy is inactivated, then why do I need to reduce the attack by 50%? Um, basically, this will be useful for the second round. So the first round, the enemy doesn't attack. And then the second round, it will only attack you for 50% of its damage. Uh, electrifying enemies is also useful because, as we said before, there are enemies that only take damage if they are controlled or they're electrified as well. So electrifying them could help you break those enemy skills easier. And inactivating enemies is also pretty useful. If you've seen my gameplay, I usually run the Chaos Craft that delays enemies for two rounds just in case I mess up or um, yeah, just in case I mess up with my spin, I can redo again. So this bit, this card basically delays the enemy so you can play around them and fix any mistakes that you have done. Uh, and also the minus 50% attack is pretty useful as well for that reason, because that increases your survivability and can also help you get out of sticky situations if you messed up your spinning. That being said, Apart from the first skill of electrifying enemies, this card isn't as necessary, so I would say don't spend your resources on it yet unless you need an electrifying skill for your team. Um, I'm pretty sure the jackpot cards will have pretty good skills and you might not need to inactivate enemies or reduce their attack too much. But that will be up to consideration once we yeah, once we get the news on the jackpot cards, I might change my opinion on this card. Yeah. Moving on, we have Marino, which is a Fire Makina and a CD5. This is going to be the shortest out of all the non-jackpot cards. And the effects are as follows. For one round, or the first effect is turn three runes into fire runes. Earth ranks first in priority, so you're generating three attacking runes. If fire, if fire runes are attacking runes, second effect, the skill can be reactivated once. So basically, you have a choice between activating it and generating three runes or six runes, which, depending on the stage or depending on the number of attacking runes that you need, could be pretty useful. Third, at the end of the round, CD skill will be reset. So no matter if you chose just one or twice, uh, the, the skill will be reduced back to CD5, which means that we are not able to do all those like shenanigans that we could with, um, what's her name, the Konosuba series, where if you activate it on one round, it jumps back again but then you just don't activate it and then in the next battle you can double activate it again and then you basically have an infinite skill there so we cannot do that with this card because the CD will end itself at the end of the round and then for one round the characters attack times two and the, if there are two or more enemies present the characters attack times three additionally so a maximum of six times multiplier for a CD5 skill, a times 6 multiplier is going to be really good. Um, again, it will be based a lot on the leader skills and the team skills that we get. But on paper, this card seems like a really good burst option. Uh, CD5, pretty short skill, generates 6 attacking runes that feeds into this card. So, generates attacking runes and increases his attack by 6, which can help you kill some enemies easier so yeah uh, in my opinion as far as we've gone i think this one is the best non-jackpot card out of the four that we've covered so far and definitely try and get one copy of this card last card that we have is axel and this is going to be a light machina with a cd5 skill also the shortest skill um, tied for the shortest skill for the non-jackpot cards the effects are as follows. Effect 1, explode 10 random runes not adjacent to each other. So those are going to be diagonal runes. 
and this includes frozen and petrified runes to generate light runes. For one round, the characters, if the character's fuel is 100%, light runes can be dissolved by aligning two or more of them. So, let's go with the second effect first. This effect can only be activated when your fuel is 100%. So at that point, you might have better options since it will take a, a couple rounds to get there. And dissolving light runes by aligning two or more I think dissolving runes in groups of two is really useful. If you've seen like Groth or Ingrid or like Ghosty, that increases your combo count. However, this only counts for light runes. So unless you have a really good way of generating light runes, which in this case he has, he can generate 10 light runes, it's not as useful. But this card generates light runes, so this this second effect plays off the first effect pretty well. Um, I'm really hoping that the leaders have a runestone possession effect because we have a lot of cards that can generate different attributes like Marino could generate fire runes, Axel can generate light runes, but this doesn't matter if your leader is a water card and cannot have those members as those cards as members. So crossing fingers that the cards uh, can be used together, but we'll see next week when they announce the new jackpot cards. So going back to the first skill, if you watch my card reviews before, you will notice how much I hate random, the word random. This is because whenever I'm playing, I like to have control on what runes I explode and what runes I can use or how I can manage my board. So the fact that I'm exploring 10 random runes, it's not going to be that useful. I think the only use for this skill is to generate the light runes for the second effect. Like you might have frozen and petrified runes, but this doesn't matter if those 10 random runes don't actually explode those cards, right? So if you're aiming to get rid of the petrified runes and it just randomly skips those, then you're screwed for that stage, basically. I think this would have been better if it says frozen and petrified rank first in priority, but since it doesn't have that skill, I think... Yeah, basically this first effect, in my eyes, is only used to generate 10 light runes for the second effect. It is CD5, so... It's pretty short CD, so it might be a good way to just generate attacking runes. But yeah, overall, so there we go. Those are the five non-jackpot cards that they have released for this week's GNN news. Overall, I think they have pretty good member skills. None of them is... Yeah, I think out of all of them, Marino will be the best one because you can use this in any fire team like uh, you can use him or them you can use them in a supreme reckoning greek for generating attacking runes as well um, but yeah all overall overall all these cards can be really good members but we are waiting to see what the jackpot cards are next week so up until then i will keep my reviews here and if anything changes, I will let you know. But in my opinion, I will definitely try and get Marino. I will get Alia because of the igniting. And then also Palette for electrifying. Those are pretty good utility. Cinnamon, we'll have to see after the team skills and leader skills as well as Axel. Um, but yeah, overall, not bad. I'm excited. Rockman has been one of the few video games that I've actually played, so I'm excited to have them as a collab. So that's going to be fun for me at least. But yeah, that's going to be all for my non-jackpot card review. I know it's a little bit longer than my usual videos, but this is because we're covering five cards at the same time. But yeah, if you like this video, please leave a comment if I missed anything or 
said anything wrong, also please leave a comment and let me know what I can do better. As always, stay tuned for my YouTube channel for more Tower of Saviors content, and I will see you next time. Bye everyone!